All right, Ben Manning, today is Tuesday. It's December 5th. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. Here we are, uh, Tinfoil Tuesday, as it used to be called, but uh, kind of everything Tuesday at this point. News. We've run out of foil, <laughs> out of tin foils. So if you have a good one, I'm all ears, but you know, there's only so many of those you can do. Yeah, no, you're right about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, here we are. Here we are, another topic, and a lot of rip. Kind of a world news. Uh, well, we used to do world news Wednesday. Sometimes. Yeah, this is kind of world news, right? Yeah, I'd say so. So if you if you went on the Daily Mail uh, within the last week, or really any of those kind of major news aggregator kind of websites, you might have seen that the world's largest iceberg has broken off of Antarctica. And it's floating through. So now, like, all kind of climate stuff is in the news. So I figured we'd, we'd take a look at these Milankovitch cycles, which is, like, another way of kind of, like, blows my mind to, like, think about the way the Earth moves and, like, how that impact climate and, how like, where it is around the sun, all the kind of stuff that, like, I feel like we don't necessarily think about. We kind of get on, like, a one-track mind and be like, it's got to be this thing. So if we just stop that, it'll be fine. Uh, so we'll get into that. We'll talk about that stuff. Beautiful. Before we get into it, though, I want to talk about the most comfortable jeans, chino, shorts, and joggers we ever. We talking Muggsy? We're talking Muggsy, of course. I got a nice promo code for you guys at the end of this. Let me tell you a little bit about it first, though. Uh, it's made from buttery, soft, patented stretch materials that look stylish but are insanely comfortable. Never too baggy, never too tight. They're frankly the best thing to happen to legs since shares. Yeah, it, they're incredible, and they're good for like you know they're good for the bar, they're good for around the house. You can do yard work in them. I played uh, a little turkey bowl with the nephews in them. Mugsies are just the absolute best. They're, they're, it's like you're not wearing jeans. It's something else. They should not be called jeans. <laughs> There's something else. I also can't say enough about the chinos. Yeah, you love the chinos. The chinos are yeah. lights out. They really are. The chinos and the shorts I love as well, too. You got so a lot like, of compliments on those. Those right? You got. They were bold. Yeah. They're red pants, maroon Mar- pants. Maroon pants. Yeah. I was wearing them. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Mugsy gave them to me. I was like, I'll give them a chance. And I love them. Yeah. Probably wear them to Christmas. So get yeah, your. You uh, it's great Christmas. Yeah, man. get your Christmas yeah. list going. Uh, make sure Mugsy's on there. Or you can head to Muggsy.com right now and get 10% off now using code CHICAGO. That's 10% off some of those premium jeans, chinos, swimwear, and shorts on the internet. Muggsy also offers free shipping in return, so there's absolutely no risk giving them a try. If you're in Chicago, Boston, D.C., or Austin, Texas, make sure to head downtown and check out their storefront as well. Easy vibes every time. Enjoy a beer while you shop. Actually, I'm going to try to pull up this DM right here really quick. Someone sent me a DM where they went to the store in Boston and had a, had a great experience Bear with me for a second. I mean, we had a great experience in our time there too. We yeah, did. They, it's, here, it's here chill. it is. They got the beers. A real or this is a genuine DM I got on November twenty fifth. Hit up Muggsy on Newberry Street in Boston today. Unreal quality stuff and a great staff. I ended up walking out with three times the amount of stuff I was planning on getting. There you go. Shout out Jimmy in Boston. Great stuff. Um, all right. Uh, where do we start with this? Well, let's start with that Glacier. iceberg. The iceberg's fucking crazy, and that's the thing where everybody is like. Oh shit! Like we're gonna have sea level rise as soon as these icial or uh, glacial caps melt, they go into the ocean. So this one is like I feel like we might have talked about it uh, or something similar to it on like one of those old Doomsday episodes. Mm -hmm. This thing is massive. It's like nearly it's an iceberg now because it's floating in the ocean. It's almost the size of Delaware. It's twice the size of London. It's absolutely it's enormous and it's uh, it's uh, almost fifteen. Uh, 100 feet high so it's like a skyscraper floating it it's fucking enormous okay and it was like stuck to like the uh the seabed uh down in antarctica for like the last i think it was like 30 years and then it finally broke away so now this thing is just floating out in the ocean and it's like it is it's a massive floating island like you could it would take you probably a few days to walk all the way across it Holy shit. It's it's that big. And so this is one of those things where it's like, all right, like all the, the things of global warming that people were uh, predicting would happen, you're going to have these like massive, uh, you know, massive glacial melt. And that's going to cause all sorts of all sorts of catastrophes because we've had uh, carbon emissions are, are up and temperatures are up and all of that. And uh, we talked about we talk about the climate every once in a while. And then it's like sometimes because I, I'm I'm fascinated with like ancient history and like species and civilizations and stuff like that, where it's like they know for a fact that we've been way hotter than we are now and we've been an ice um, like a, a little ice ball 
in the past too, or the entire planet is just covered in ice and they don't really know what causes it. But it, so it always felt to me, it's like, ah, like we're doing all this stuff now and that's what's causing it. When this happens on its own, every, uh, on, on seemingly a cycle, like there, like I've referenced this on other episodes before too, where like the Sahara desert, it's like the most inhospitable place in the world. Like you can't go across it. There's been no archeology span there done really ever because it's expensive because you can't set up any infrastructure because nobody lives there because you die because it's just too hot and too dry. So no one knows what goes on there. But what's something that they do know is that it used to be like a lush tropical grassland uh, 26,000 years ago. And it turns out that that cycle kind of repeats itself like every 26 to 40,000 years. It turns into a grassland. Like how the, how the fuck is that possible? And there's this guy, a Serbian guy in the about 100 years ago, named Milankovic was his last name, who kind of discovered these cycles in the Earth's movement that it's like, as you read through, you're like, this is like, it's just not what we're taught growing up a way that, you know, because it's like, oh, we have the seasons, right? And it's like the Earth revolves around the sun and it tilts a little bit. And when you see like the diagram of the solar system, it's just like it moves in a circle, right? Okay. So, Harry, do you have the ability to pull things up on this? Yep. Okay, so pull up um, pull up the solar system traveling through space GIF. Also, did you say where this thing's floating to? Like, it's down in Antarctica, so yeah, it's in the southern ocean. So it's like kind of on its way towards. Okay, so look at that thing. That's the sun kind of going in a straight line, and all the planets and everything are – rotating around it so that's actually how we're moving through space so we're not just in like a fixed position the sun is always shooting away uh in space and we're on all the nine planets eight planets whatever the solar system travel around it in a circle which the sun always seems fixed in the sky to us mm -hmm. for the most part so when you see i don't know when the first time i saw that i was like that's fucking crazy we're doing that all the time you're just on a constant roller coaster yeah <laughs> did you know that that no. that's how we go through space of course not no. okay so the earth okay it spins a thousand miles an hour like we don't feel it but you know as we're going through our own rotation which you can't really pick up up on that diagram we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour um we're going around the sun at sixty-seven thousand miles an hour Okay, it's like the fucking fastest thing on the on in the spaces the way our own planet moves, and then the entire solar system moving through space is traveling at four hundred and fifty thousand miles an hour. So like we are faster than a bullet going through space like that. Okay, and the other thing that happens is that we because we've only been around on the planet as a species for a very short period of time where we're actually like measuring and looking at stuff. But you know about how the seasons are, right? Like we're we're tilted on an axis. Right? So mm -hmm. in the summer, we northern hemisphere tilts towards the sun. Now the winter, we tilt away from the sun. But there's also you have the way the earth orbits the sun. So I I had always thought it was just kind of like a circle, like we're just going around a pretty standard circle. That only happens some of the time. Most of the time, the time that we're living in, it's more of like an oval shape. So the, the period that we, the planet Earth, is closest to the sun in miles is actually on January 3rd. We're furthest away from the sun on July 4th. So all of our warmth and everything like that, that only has to do, uh, is only because of the way we're tilted we're actually super far away, but that actually switches too. So they say in, in like 13,000 years from now, this app, this happens in 26,000 year cycle. So we're already like halfway through it. 13,000 years from now are, we're going to flip with the Southern hemisphere. No shit. Yeah. So, so like January is going to be, be summer? summer and then Australia would have uh white Christmases. That's fucking insane. Yeah. So, and that has always been the thing. It just oscillates back and forth over a period and then the other thing that they say that really impacts ice ages is 
where the North Pole is, that actually tilts too. So it's it's not just like while we're flying through space like that, we're not straight up and down. We know we're on a tilt. That's how we get our seasons. But where the actual north thing is, they always call it like magnetic north or whatever, but that moves. It moves throughout time. So the high end is um, 24.5 degrees. The low end is 22 degrees. So it's like a two-degree shift where how much lean you're getting on the whole planet, okay? which one degree tilt is actually a lot. And we are at this present time, we're actually still technically, I guess, in, according to scientists, we're still in an ice age. Like most of the time, we're, we're they call it interglacial period right now, we're able to like grow stuff. But the only time it's not an ice age is when there's no ice on the planet. So that's something that we're kind of moving towards and then it resets. But like if you look at like the cycles, we're due to actually enter into like a, a more dramatic ice age because of a few different very things going on. And one of them is that tilt of the earth. So as the earth goes away from the 24 degree and goes up to the, uh, like uh, it'll be a little bit more like kind of straight up and down with that 20, 22 or 21 degree tilt. That means your summers are going to be a lot. They're going to be longer but they're going to have uh, they're going to be more mild because it's going to be like it basically be like, all right, it's September kind of temperatures all the time mm -hmm. where you're going to have some hot days, but it's going to, you know, it's not going to be too bad. So what that means is that in the summer, those polar ice caps, they don't melt as much as the earth kind of straightens up. Those, they don't they don't get as hot. They don't melt. So then you just you ref end up reflecting more light out into the outer space. And it, that causes more snow to be built up. So we are like, we're having this warming period that nobody can really explain while the while we're straightening up. So it's like you have kind of two conflicting things happen at the same time. So they know the planet's getting warmer, but they say over a long period of time, they don't think that that's going to last because of all these other things going on in the atmosphere. And I remember my dad, one time when he was like talking about, I don't know, like gas crisis or something. And he was like, ah, like, you know, we got all these things and they're going on. And, and it's like, what if we're just like, you know, people are saying the planet's getting hotter. I don't know. What if we're just going through a, a cold patch of space? And I'm like, what are you talking about? A cold patch of space? Well, th while there may not be a colder patch of space necessarily, there is some like people think there is some truth to that now too. Cause not only are we going around in an oval, Okay, a lot of the time, oval, oval or circle, and that rotates. It also, the entire way that we go around the sun, instead of it being straight up and down sometimes or straight around, that goes kind of diagonal at times too. And we're moving at a way that's more diagonal. And depending on what other junk is in the atmosphere, in, in the solar system as we're rotating around, we go, there could be just more dust. So we go through more dust light doesn't get through as much that causes ice ages. So like the timeline of things that we're on, we haven't, we had an ice age that ended about 12,000 years ago. Nobody knows exactly why some people think it was a meteor. Some people, it, there's all sorts of different explanations, but like a lot of these cycles that we're going through state that we are kind of inching towards a more of a cooling period where we're going to have a uh, more of an ice age. Like that's coming back, maybe not even in our lifetimes, but like that whole thing where you're, you use, this is, I feel like one of the, your facts that you've, you've thrown out there a lot that Chicago is going to look like uh Phoenix in the yeah. year 2040, maybe. Okay. But it's, we're not, we're probably not long for that because of how all these different forces that are going along and a lot of these different things that we're just getting pulled by gravity. So if we were if we were only getting pulled by the sun, the sun's gravity, we would probably just have a circle, right? But we're also pulled by Jupiter, by Saturn, by all these other things like in our own solar system, these massive things. And that's why they like kind of pull it out kind of like a rubber band and we go around the sun like that in that oval shape. And all of these different things that we're like barely even aware are happening have an impact on our climate right down to like, Hey, it's cold now. Well, it's cause the earth is tilted and it's fucking wobbly. They don't even know how it started wobbling. Some people think that, uh, that the moon 
actually collided was another planet. The moon collided with the earth million, billions of years ago and stuck in our orbit. But that's what kind of like got us off of our wobble. There are other people who say like asteroid impacts can knock you off your, off your kind of your equilibrium. So instead of being like a straight up and down, you're wobbling too. And then, you know, and then there's Mars doesn't even rotate at all. So it's like, we're kind of lucky that we're able to even to have like a, a rotation where we're not just facing the sun the whole time. The moon doesn't rotate either. So like, we're always looking at the same side of the moon. So there's all these different contributing factors that play into climate change. And that's when it's like, when you see people like arguing about this, it's like, well, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I kind of think that you should just have gas in your car. You should probably just get rid of your Tesla because when you think of it on like a, that scale, like I don't think that we're making that big of an impact. How could we be? It's interesting for sure. I did not know. The You've tils- been like transfixed on this. Yeah, I mean, this image. Yeah, I mean it is a crazy image. I hope it could be embedded for people that don't know. It's basically like the sun looks like a shooting star, and then mm-hmm. every other planet is corkscrewing around it, yeah. like, like a mad fucking in, in different in in different like they all have their own orbits right like they are all the orbit shapes are a little bit patterns are a little bit different and you know if the ones on the furthest uh like pluto would have probably the most circular orbit pattern and then we are like almost like an egg shape like that's kind of how our like an oval an elliptical that's how it that's how our orbit around the sun looks which it is crazy to me that like when we're freezing our tits off in January, that's when we're the closest to the sun. Yeah, that's weird. That, it's very counterintuitive. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah, the tilts are wild. Yeah, and they say you know how I said that they're gonna uh, in like thirteen thousand years of the seasons will be opposite because of the way the tilt is relative to the cycle. They're saying that those summers um, in thirteen thousand years in the northern hemisphere, it. Chicago will be like Arizona then for sure because it'll be so fucking hot because not only will you have the the lean in, you know, we're tilting the way we normally do in the summer, but you're also going to be that much closer to to the earth mm-hmm. or to the sun. So we're going to get like the the best or worst of both worlds where we're not only are we close to it, but we're also leaning into it. So you're going to have long, hot summer days. So the northern hemisphere is like kind of fucked in 13,000 years. But then that, you know, but then they say, like, who knows? Maybe we're entering into a cycle or that could, they say that that could be the beginning of an ice age, too, because of how elongated, uh, how the how the poles shift and then how we are in the actual, these hundred year, hundred thousand year cycles that this guy, uh, Milankovic, came up with. It kind of explains how we are. And then th- that just makes you think of, like, how the Mayans knew all this shit, too. Where they had, they had like, if you look at their, they have the, we have like a 12 month calendar, right? Well, they had that as well. They had a, they had a monthly yearly calendar, but then they had that thing called the long count calendar, which tracked you in like eons, which is like, well, it's 26,000 year cycles. And that's when people thought that the whole world was ending in 2012. Yeah. It's because they like miscalculated the Mayan calendar. It was mm-hmm. like, it was just off. But that is how they like kind of determine how long these things go is they, they somehow the minds just by looking up at space forever, were able to figure out these different cycles just through observation and geometry. Hmm. It's fucking insane. It is. Now, now this iceberg, mm-hmm. is that going to like go it into a country and just like do so, damage like the ship and speed two or what's going to happen? It's, it's possible. So, I mean, it's, it had been stuck in one spot for 30 years. So like they knew it was going to break off. Now it's just like cruising in the ocean. So it's in the Southern ocean, which, um, I want to pull it off because it's, you know, how our, our, um, Antarctica has that like almost like an arm or a tail coming off it as it breaks up towards Chile. Mm-hmm. I believe it's in that part of the ocean. Okay. So it's coming up to, yeah. to Chile. Yeah. But like that, there are uh, that is like dangerous. It's not like the best shipping lane, but ships go through there. Mm-hmm. Like so, if you are like, oh, we have to account for this country city size <laughs> we have to divert our path around this giant iceberg, like that could be, yeah, that could be a thing. And then it's like, does that was that iceberg like the little 
people are worried that it was like the boy with his finger in the dam. Like it was fixed in that spot because it was caught on the seabed floor somehow. Mm -hmm. But it's like once that moves off, does that allow other things on that other glacial uh, movement on that ice on that ice sheet to be moved to be sped up? So yeah. it's like nothing. It was like you know you're holding it in place, and then that thing breaks off. Does it inch over like that mm -hmm. and start creating more of like a an alarm at, an alarming amount of glacial melt and glacial movement? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited for that to see where I always, I always think that we'll figure it out. We'll just figure it out. Like uh, the sea levels are rising. I don't know. Build the walls higher. Like it's not going to be good. But human beings have been through all sorts of shit on this planet for the last 400,000 years. We survived it all. And we're smarter in, in a lot of ways, technology, uh, technologically speaking, than we ever have been. We'll figure out a way to manage and react to the climate and probably be fine. This this is obviously a stupid thought, but is it going to bring like cooling wherever this thing goes? This iceberg? Yeah, because it's basically like... I mean, obviously, the more it melts, the more yeah, it'll, sea levels are going to rise towards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It'll dissipate yeah. for sure um, as, it, as it melts. But, yeah, that, I think that one of the major problems with the ocean warming is actually, I heard somewhere there's a lot of overfishing, and then some populations of fish have died off because the, the uh, floor or so the top layers of the ocean got too um got too warm so you don't have these giant schools of fish plummeting down moving back up and kind of naturally circulating uh the water which is why i always was like well why don't we just put a sump pump down there just if, we're, if that's an issue it feels like that one in particular should be an easy fix if we ruined all these species by overfishing and the uh ocean levels warming up near the surface well, there's plenty of cold water down at the bottom. Just pump that shit back up to the top just to replace the things that we had fucked up. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to talk about Be the Hoss as well. Uh, you guys got to get it on the Hoss merch. It's awesome. What's your hat? It's great. It's an awesome hat. It's the most comfortable hat I own. Um, I really enjoy it. You and Nick Terrini wear them, I think, every day. We do, and they're good looking. They got different mm -hmm. styles, too. Like, yep. This is kind of like the like the mesh trucker. Mm -hmm. Like White Sox Dave wears the one that's a little softer. It's kind of like is a more golf of, hat. I was going to say like an athletic, mm -hmm. maybe that's, a yeah. pickleball hat, if yeah. you will, because sure. they got great pickleball stuff, too. Sure, but it's not just there, because whether you're hitting the gym, going to work, or out in the town, it's time to gear up, step out, and show the world what it means to be the hoss. This company's born and raised in Chicago, Haas and Athleisure slash streetwear brand that has a little something for everyone. That logo just pops too. Yeah. Like it looks I've had people just ask me, what is that? It's just yeah. a cool, like they just like the logo. Yeah, people will definitely be asking about it yeah. if you buy it. So go do it. We love it. Confidence booster. Uh, go to be the .com, Check out their athletic line and leisure wear. Use code Barstool for 20% off the whole store and be the Haas today. That simple, guys. Hop in on the action. I wonder. Was that something that Elon's figuring out or what? Elon, I don't know if he's been on one lately. Did you see that? Uh, the thing about the Apple or the was, Disney? Yeah. He yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody. So I, like, he had a tweet that he was like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. I, you know, like, I made an effort to clarify, but it was, you know, he's like, I'm going to make mistakes on that app. Basically, which I'm like, been there, brother. Like, I've made a million mistakes on that app where I'm like, I wish I had worded that differently. And uh, Harry, I'm going to need you to close that image because it's just <laughs> like uh, killing me, but distracting me. But then he was just like, you know, you're going to try to bribe me with money. Like, go fuck yourself. And he was mm -hmm. talking to uh, Iger. Bob Iger. He's like, I don't know if you're in the audience, but he's like, go fuck yourself. Uh, but it's like there's a lot of those different companies. I think it was Viacom was, was pulling ads. There's a ton of them. But is Elon trying to fix that? That's the thing where it's like people – you know, hate on Elon and say he's this like right wing, you know, monster, this or that. But like he is, you know, he's kind of dedicated a good chunk of his life to climate change to like, you know, we have, we have to have less fossil fuels. Well, I will make the world's best and first, you know, battery powered car, which like no one had really done that in a commercial way. Like there had been a few hybrids, but he really kind of cracked the code on that. I feel like he gets too much shit for, uh, well, cause it's almost like, why'd you have to do this? You know, you don't have to be, 
You don't. He doesn't have to be doing all this other stuff. What? I feel like, like he. Everyone loved him until he did Twitter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I think I think he didn't. Not just bought Twitter, just like till he was like running wild on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like people's thoughts. Like, why don't you just do the boring company and do? Why don't hustle? you just shut the fuck up yeah, and be and rich? Just, yeah, and just like come up with cool shit and come up with good ideas. But you I know? think I think the argument is like the the best idea he had. Well, he's trying to protect free speech. And if you, you know, anybody who read through like those Twitter files where it's like they were just an active arm of like the United States Mm -hmm. intelligence, if you read, that's how it reads when you go through the Twitter files, like they're telling us what to pull, they're telling us who to ban. And it's like every social media company on earth has been captured effectively by, you know, government policy. And he's like, well, we're not doing that anymore. So he bought it. And it feels like that's when people started to hate him. But then it's like, are you hating him because people are telling you you're supposed to hate him? Or like, what has he, what has he done on Twitter that's been so bad? Yeah, a few bad tweets. Meh. Well, I think the argument is a lot of people's feeds are more, uh, or at least it's what people are saying. Their feeds are more like radicalism and fights and violence. And- Do you feel that? Uh, I stick to my feed. I don't do like the for you. Oh, much. so I don't do the for you at yeah, all. Yeah, but I ha I haven't seen that to be honest. But yeah. like, I'm not, like I like. There's people we work with that like some of our producers and stuff. They say they see it. So yeah, I don't know if I'm just completely just out of the loop to that. Uh, could, I mean, algorithm. it could be, but it's also like but like I know it, it's definitely happening to some degree. Yeah. And then like you know, obviously he unsuspended people, and so right. I don't know. Like, I'm listen, trying to decide like what's. Which is worse? You need to see something unpleasant that might, you know, may not be true, or do you have to see a lot of a lot of pleasant things that are absolutely not true? Yeah, and a lot, listen, I think a lot of it's unfair. Like I don't like I. Sorry to bring this up because okay. obviously it's a tough topic for you, but that uh, you see Gord Miller left uh, the uh, the Canada broadcaster. No, he left Twitter. He left X. Oh no! Because of the uh, the Bedard stuff. What do you He's, mean? He said it was reckless that X did not like start pulling down people's tweets, making these uh, <sighs> like these rumors, and that's like, well, Gord it, Miller is a fucking dink. Well, like those. That's another thing. Even under old Twitter, like that, that was stuff, happening <laughs> all the time. It wouldn't have been removed. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it that's would, where it's like, there's all right, no a lot way of that would have been removed under no, the, you know, and it's because it's like, how do you even combat something like that? That's like a you know, and and. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of this law, but basically there is a law that says that it was applied to like phone companies and radio companies, you know, originally. It's like, you're not, if someone plans and plots a murder while using AT&T or Verizon, AT&T and Verizon are not responsible or they're not complicit in that for, you know, because people were using their platform and that same law. And I am, I apologize. I'm blanking on the name of it. That also applies to uh, social media companies as well, like you, they're just they're using the platform. So by law, they do not have an obligation to remove or censor people like that. And they actually probably, in my opinion, it should be illegal to censor that um, because it's just you have people have a, have had a right to say what they're what they want to say in this country for since the beginning. Yeah. And Unless if it's like actual like physical harm, that's when I, that's like the line I so would say I draw. Physical harm, how? Like if there's like a mass shooter dot com and it's like a bunch of people just sharing ideas, sharing, uh, yeah, plans, but it, like I think that's crazy. So like that's something I agree. Can't let those people just you know be online. Yeah, and just fan each other's flames about like how to no do this, do that, go here, go where, go. You know what I mean? But I I think that that yeah, that's that's where it gets really yeah, tricky. Yeah, it does. I think that that would be reasonable cause to round those people up, you know, to mm-hmm. go in and, and, you know, arrest them, question them, do it. It'd be like, Hey, like why, you know, what's going on here? And then observe them. Can you get a warrant to watch these people who are inciting violence? Cause I, I do reject that thing. And this is, I feel like I've said this on this show before where like, where people try to equate words with violence mm-hmm. and it's like, well, words are not violence violence is violence there's a reason that we have that word it's for like it's for punching people in the face and doing bodily harm to people that's what violence is saying that you know and i'm i'm a victim of hate speech all the time people are mean to me on this app all the time saying how fat i've gotten all this kind of stuff but it's just like that's not violence 
that's you know like being mean is not a violent act you disagree with that no no no. i'm not saying i i'm not saying i disagree yeah i'm not saying that i just i don't know it seems like just too hard to enforce yeah just uh yeah the fire has gotten too large (laughs) yeah and it's just and like and then it's like what do you really want social media companies and like be like they're the ones who determine what is okay like i don't know i don't really trust any i i don't trust anybody with that responsibility so it's like nobody should have it and then we'll just work it out on our by ourselves as individual people like where the where the line is Mm -hmm. and then like we talked about like i i don't know i think maybe there's something where people it shouldn't be so anonymous you know, you yeah, I think there's an element of that for chest, sure. You know? Yeah, like sure, and then it's like, well, what about like parody accounts? Like this, like all right, then then register those too. Be anonymous, yeah. and then but if it, shit goes linked, haywire, it's like, linked up to like a real person. Yeah, people yeah. know where to find that person. And while there have been some funny parody accounts over the years, if we did get rid of all parody accounts, I don't think we're missing that much as a society. I'm sorry, that's fucked up. Do you think that's fucked up? Yeah, dude. What what's the? I mean. I, I can't even think of one that I like. I feel like parody accounts on Twitter are like a thing of the past. You see new parody, like there's a new Connor Bedard parody, but it's like who cares? You don't, you don't like there's like, drunk Patrick Kane yeah, back in the yeah. day. Everyone loved that one. Drunk uh, Javon Carter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Drunk. That's all. That's what it was. Drunk Tyler yeah, Johnson. Yeah, but I feel like that was 2014. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like they they'll take anyone and yeah. they get drunk. Yeah, there was a drunk Dylan Strom. I remember. I think was I had there? like 11 followers. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's what like like who's the people sitting at home being like I gotta hop on. Yeah. That drunk. The drunk Patrick Dylan Kane one account. was huge. Oh though. yeah, like yeah, don't get like, me wrong. Like, yeah. Some of them definitely have done well and caught on and like yeah. got a following. That's one of them. Mm-hmm. You know. But it's like I. If that account never existed, I don't think it's that big of a deal. That's so. a tough day for the, the, the army of, of yeah. drunk parody accounts. Oh, the, was, there was another, ho- another hockey one, too. It was the uh, Danny Heatley one. Um, That was like, I think that one might have got close to like a million followers. Really? Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's like a, it's I, just yeah. it's too big of a... It's like it's like the technology went too fast. Like we had all these things before we knew what to do with them in terms of like social media and smartphones and it's like both of those are like holy shit like revolutionary pieces like technology where you have like social media and then your traveling computer and it's like you did them both at the same time and now no one knows how to function. Yeah, a lot of people just didn't see like the the downsides of it. Yeah. There was I always s- the upsides. You could be in a diner and look at you know, social media, it was never like, oh, wow, that's awesome. I was like, well, how much is that going to change? I wonder if there was someone in, what was it, like really 2008-ish, 9-ish where it got bigger? Like that's like Yeah, kind so of, I got. I remember got, phone on like or internet on like the the NV3 or like the sidekick. Internet wasn't usable. No. <laughs> it wasn't usable. I had a BlackBerry when I was 23, mm-hmm. my first job. But even then, like it, I feel like I remember like doing emails on it, and I remember doing like Brick Breaker, Tetris, and things like that. I don't remember like going on social media apps, and I could like look up like a phone number to things like on Google. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like how these things are. Yeah. And I, but that was the thing. You know how there's like, and we're gonna do it an AI episode eventually. But there's all this like consternation and like worry about like how AI is going to ruin the world and it's going to and it's I don't remember hearing that about smartphones and social yeah, media. Same, yeah, same. But it's one of those things where I wonder if like how everything's politicized now. Like, was I just oblivious in the 2000s when I was, or like it's possible, you know, when, when like? But I also feel like that even like the way that like Facebook was set up, right? Facebook was set up. You had to have that .edu address to get it initially. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember when it came to, to Lake Forest, like everybody got it like my freshman year. And so it was like, you didn't even have any, any adults 
looking at you. It was just like, ah, like what? Like whatever. Well, whatever. You know, like the kids are doing something on Facebook. You know, like what's Facebook? And no one really even knew about it, thought about it. Nobody was minding the store where I feel like now it may be the way that they should have been. But it wasn't. But it, at that time, it wasn't what it is now. It was just you would you would post on yeah. Natalia's wall and be like, hey. Like, How'd you know her name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good no. guess. Yeah. Like, hey, thanks for uh, the homework yesterday. Yeah. Or like, you Happy know. Happy birthday. Yes. Or yeah. Frank would say, hey, like. Yeah. Nice shot oh, today. I would love to see what Frank's Facebook was like, <laughs> 2000, 2007, 2008. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things where you. Tanky. Yeah, you didn't, like, there was no memes. There was no, like, people hopping on there to yeah. rant about what's going on in the world. You, I, you, I do remember getting off in 2000, off of Facebook specifically, and that's kind of when I do, went into using Twitter more. In 2012, when the the Romney, Romney-Obama election, I was like, by that time, like, all, like, our parents were on it. They were arguing about politics on each other's walls, and they would have, like, the, my whole feed, which used to be, like, hot girl Halloween costumes, yeah. had turned into, like... You know, it flipped quick, man. It did. It flipped quick, but then at the same time, uh, it was enjoyable at the beginning. Like, remember when people were arguing real heavy on there? Oh, it was like ruined families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's it was see like, it Thanksgiving, it, asshole. Yeah, if your family wasn't in the middle of the crosshairs, like it was like, yeah. oh yeah, Facebook fight, Facebook. and then that yeah. it got to a point where it's just like, it's exhausting. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if it. I don't think it's. It might still be active. I don't know, but it's. I have not been on and and won't. I actually think I think Twitter if you have just Twitter and Instagram, like what else do you really need? Like, you know, do you, uh, the TikTok crowd will come TikTok too, yeah. I was I, I'm on TikTok. I don't really post anything, but I do scroll on it at least every day. I was talking th- this weekend we had a work event and we were talking with a girl who was working with us and and she we were talking about social media. She's like if I had to get rid of everything, the only one I would keep is TikTok. Like if I had a Really? If it was a lone survivor, like that would be hmm. that would be it. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And she was, it's she was the most 30. entertaining. She, she wasn't like a young like yeah. Gen X you know. It's so. probably the most entertaining. Because it's kind of like it's to me it's uh, it's like it's just sh- YouTube Shorts effectively, mm-hmm. and uh, but it's all like I don't know. There's something about it. There's a low production quality for the most part, which I think is kind of charming in a way. And uh, it's always know. crazy when these companies can't capitalize on something like that. Like YouTube has had this platform forever, and they couldn't think of like a way to a way to. But no one was pushing them. Yeah. You know, it's like that old Michael Scott where he's like, when I, and I think of that episode was from like 2006 or seven, something. He's like, when I first discovered uh, YouTube, I didn't work for four days because he was just scrolling through, like watching videos. And it was great. You know, I, and then oh, they, yeah. oh, YouTube would have just kept on being YouTube without any improvement. And that's like the beauty of capitalism. Like somebody's coming for their, their lunch and they're going over to this other platform because it's more enjoyable for whatever reason. They switch. You know, like, yeah. why, how did, I don't know. It is crazy how like all the companies just steal from each other. They all steal from each other, but there's only like four companies. Like, yeah. Google owns YouTube. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like Zuckerberg has basically every social media except for X and yeah. TikTok. You know? I wonder how, uh, what is it? Threads is doing. Has there I been haven't. an update on Threads recently? I I don't know. I get like if I'm scrolling through Instagram they'll put like somebody's thread in my Instagram feed yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah, me to click that. on I've it. But that. like, I don't, I had to, I deleted the app because, um, I felt like it was making my phone like wonky clunky. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, and it did kind of work once I, it was like, I had to log into, huh. you know, so I just got rid of it. That's weird. Um, but yeah, I felt like that threads was like a full, like, Hey, people kind of hate Elon. Let's start the exact same thing. And, and people would jump on it. No one, no one's on it. Mm-hmm. That's that's the vibe I get. Like I don't think I'd never hear anybody talking about. It. Harry, do you use Threads? No, I didn't need another app. Yeah, I opted out. And I don't think any like. Do you hear people on? No, I know. Uh, like, I don't like, like we're bar- a social media company. I don't hear people uh, talking. I don't barstools like they they've kept up with it just because they're always like, hey, we got to be here in case if it does take off, you know. So I think they're following through. But like, if you're out. talking like Nick Terrani, like Pete, like the people who would oh, be using it. Oh, I don't know if like it. any person. I know at like a corporate it. level, but yeah, like, like I know personalities. Like Barcelona, Chicago, and like the yeah. dog walk. Like they're probably posting, from what I understand. Okay. But I don't, I don't know anyone from a, I don't, I don't a coworker content yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Keeping like, up oh, with did you see my thread. I also don't know anyone like 
person like in my personal life yeah that are like hey like do you see my yeah like yeah you see what i threaded <laughs> Threaded. Where the fuck you say i, I, I think know. that would be it i threaded it i threaded it yeah i don't know huh i don't know why how we got from icebergs to here but i don't know that's where we that's where you ended up so i like when that happens though yeah it's good it's yeah. always fun um all right then that's about it that's, that's it that's about it thanks everybody for listening thanks for watching uh we'll be back tomorrow with a free swim we will see you then